Hey, Bjorn Strandy, I'm here. Welcome back to Disco Elysium, where we are about to leave. We've been talking to this very unhelpful dude. And it's time, I think, to head back to the hotel. And, ooh, you know what? I'm still equipped with my pry bar. Uh, I, can, I can get in here. You get 75 cents. Can I get in here? No, it looks like my pry bar won't get me in there. And it doesn't any clues on how to get there. But anyway, we want to uh, head back uh, into and out of the apartment. And the plan now is going to be that I am going to uh, go listen to that tape. Although, let's check out what's this over here. Another splattering of bullet holes on this wall. Okay. Never did go in there. Still not going in there. Still not sure it would be a, a smart idea to do that. Um, but yeah, so go and check out what's on that tape that the Hardy Boys gave us. And then try to sneak away from Kim and come back and talk to um, Ms. Messier about the, I think it was the pale something that, uh, that Kim didn't want us, didn't, he didn't want us to talk to her about it. I don't know why. But for whatever reason, let's see. I don't think there's anything we need to... Uh, what, what? You know, I've never looked at this here. The tracks. Oh, I have. This is just the the tracks. Uh, I already saw all this. Never mind. And I do think we need to at some point, like one. There is a suspicion that maybe the one of the um, remaining kind of guards of which the murder man was one is somewhere in one of these office buildings. We should probably see if we can get in there somehow too. But uh, let's see. All right, these guys are still hanging out here, which is good. Let's see if I just go upstairs. Will, will if can I go listen to the thing? And will I lose Kim, or will he stick with me? I mean, we could also talk to him in the morning if we needed to. But I don't want to talk to them without having Kim for backup. Okay. Did he just start to say something? Oh, I can pick up bottles in my room, too. Oh, you said bye. All right, so uh, I guess that's it. Um, the contact player is still in silent. It's completely broken down now. The machine was made in Revachal by a company called La Mercier. Their logo depicts the triple tower Delta Skyline. It was supposedly built to last. There is no fixing this one. So what now? Best find a new player. A boombox, funky style, maybe the guy at the pawn shop can help out. Okay, so we're not gonna be able to we're gonna be able to listen to this um anyway at this point. Let's take let's just get all these bottles out of my room. I think maybe it'll be a little easier to uh oh I can't pick that one up. A little easier to stay on the wagon if um there's not so many bottles kind of bugging me about it. And yeah, good. That's a bottle. And let's see. You know what? Uh, do I want to look in? Let me look in the mirror real quick. I can try to fix the fix the um, steam, but let's see. I have to put points in electrochemistry, which I'm not really uh, down for. But let's go ahead and at least equip the chain cutters in my hand and try to fix uh, the faucet. Success! The faucet is quite terribly mangled, but you just might be able to twist its parts into place. You handle the chain cutters deftly, applying just enough pressure. The faucet regains a recognizable shape. The steam stops. Steam stops. Stops. Told told you that you needed those chain cutters. Everything's connected. Everything has a purpose. The mirror begins to clear slowly without you having something to wipe it. So it's still very, very low. Um, but I can get more electrochemistry by changing like this. That can be conceptualization. What is it? Uh, the party robe gives me electrochemistry. Anything else? That's interfacing. I don't think that'll help, but I'll add it anyway. Yeah, nothing else. If, oh, and these trousers give me more electrochemistry. All right, let's try this. Let's see. Um, oh, what are my thoughts now? 
The pockets of these new jeans are perfect for sticking your hands into. It makes you look cool, calm, and collected. As your hand enters the pocket, your fingers brush against something soft yet crinkly. Oh, that's interesting. Take the item out. Hey, it's a chewing gun wrapper. It reminds you of the fruity juice of apricots. You should inspect it closer if you have time. Something with the wrapper's texture is familiar. By the way, the raw material is most likely exported from Saige, the apricot suzerainty, and processed in Sur Le Clef from the apricot-flavored chewing gum loved by kids of today and yesterday. Hmm, something about it is familiar, and not only to your fingers. All right, well, let's, let's actually start with that. Uh, go to here. Go to our interactables. Let's interact with the chewing gun wrapper. There it is again, the scent of apricots, the touch of cinnamon, smells like the end of some distant summer. The surface of a, another planet or some ancient temple? Ancient temple? Yeah, from the heights of antiquity. A long, long time ago, millennia ago, on an island of time you can never return to. End of summer. The sun sets into the sea, but the water does not boil. Instead it, tur instead, it turns to liquid gold. For a moment, the world's store of precious metals seems to increase dramatically, and you are rich. There is movement next to you, the shuffle of a small coat, warm like the evening. But when you turn towards it, there's nothing there. Where'd it go? Why are you talking to a gum wrapper? Uh, take a deep, deep breath. Bitter, citrus, sweet. It seems to grow stronger, like a glow with every breath you take. Whatever petrochemical byproducts they used to create this artificial flavor have been bonded tightly to the wrapper. Or is that just your memory filling in the gaps? Until a blossom of skin and flower petals erupts in behind of your closed eyes, made of toffee cream and distance, you just had to take a dive. Feels so, so familiar. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, other stuff we can still interact with. Uh, a white envelope with a stamp attached the upper right corner, handed to you by Everett Clare. Inside are some legal docs with two names printed on them, Isobel, Sadie, and Leon Lee and Carter. Both signatures are required. Um, let's see. Look at the zoning plan. I can try to find a loophole through the deal, but let's look at the plan first. The youth center cuts into the ocean like the bow of some great modern ship. Apparently, it's going to cover most, if not all, of the street and the square behind the existing houses. It's three stories tall. It's going to be awfully close to the already existing buildings, almost wall to wall, practically integrating them into the youth center. This is either ominous or cool architectural choice, hard to say. Uh, my money is on cool. It's like a cubic pyrite. Okay, I can look for a loop hope. I'm going to use clothes before I do that. Um, let's go ahead and do it now, though. Let's go to our clothes. So these, this will give us more logic. Anything else give us more logic? I think it's just that one. Oh yeah, this hat will give us some lot more logic. Um, a little less on suggestion, but more on logic. Let's 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 do that now. Uh, sorry. So let's interact. Now let's go back, interact again. Let's see if we can find a loophole. Success. There is no loophole. The simple truth is the current residents are going to lose their street access. For the next 12 to 40 months, they're allowed to be dominated by constant construction noise right next door. So what are the ramifications of this? Once can the construction starts, it'll probably take a few months, a year maybe, for even the most stubborn occupants to get tired of living like this. After that, they'll sell their property for cheap, property for cheap and move out. This is terrible. Poor people. Can't they do something? Well, you could trick Everard. Get some random people to sign the document. By the time the union boss finds out, your business here will be already concluded. Okay. So I could... Okay, I could scupper that plan, which is tempting me. Um, I don't know if I want the minus one to suggestion at this point. Uh, I, I should interact with some other stuff too. But I think for, I'll, I'll call it quits for now. Let's... Uh, Let's see. Let's go for the lounge jacket. Take off those gloves. Those look terrible. And... Oh, wait. I was getting up electrochemistry to try to get rid of... Um... Yeah, I want these back on. I'm electrochemistry to try to get rid of the... Um... The face. See if I can do something about the face. It's still very low, even with my, like, plus two. Wait, is two my total? 
in electrochemistry. I only have plus one bonus from items. Why don't I have plus two bonus from items? Hold on. I feel like I've messed something up. So this gives me plus one. Oh, that, sorry, uh, was, what gave me the plus one? That did, okay. It's still gonna be pretty bad, but hopefully a little bit better. Now it's up to eight. Well, I might as well try it. Um, nope. Uh, nope, nope. I'll have to, uh, put a point in there. And I might do that. I'm not sure how much difference that's gonna make. So, back to some conceptualization. Let's, uh... Oh, that also gave me a plus to electrochemistry, but a minus to reaction speed. I think I like reaction speed a little bit better. All right, so now that we've done all that, we're going to sneak out back to... Hold on a second. Yeah. Um, no more bottles. We're going to sneak out back to the... Uh, well, what's her name? Madam... Come on. Pick it up. Oh, maybe is it is it down below? I must be below. All right. Anyway, back to um, Mrs. Messier. Ms. Messier. Okay. And yeah, I was here. Okay. Got myself an empty bottle. Can I talk to him for a minute? Can I help you? Um, no. There was nothing new to talk to him about. I could talk to her, but I haven't done anything about her uh, problem. He doesn't say anything. This guy who is sitting here is gone. I don't know what to do with that card either. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Not an umbrella, I hope. I don't need one myself, you see. She pats her wet raincoat. I could use a coat like that. The rain's freezing. Sadly, I need this one myself. It's hydrophobic, repels water almost magically. The company makes them for the offshore platform personnel. Very sturdy. She gives the material on their pat. What I can do for you is answer some questions. Nothing like talking to pass a rainy day. I got more questions about reality. Um, this requires... Oh, more spirit decor. More lessons in basic reality. She's probably to be surprised. My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. Well, first, what is, is this acute encephalopathy or whatever? It's a neurological disorder caused by a lack of vitamin B in the brain. Symptoms include retrograde amnesia. It's quite serious. You should get yourself checked out. She conveys it in a short, cold burst, trying not to invest too deeply in the condition of this doomed detective. In case he goes down later, souring the entire portfolio. Um, what causes it? Well, it's either uh, bariatric surgery or long-term alcohol use. It's definitely the drinking. <laughs> she nods slowly. Uh, yes, yeah, so perform autoerotic asphyxiation yourself with your funny necktie out in the open somewhere. Shut up, necktie. Now that we're alone, what is pale? Are you sure you're sure? Your colleague seemed adamant. Yes, what is the pale? Okay, she can see. The pale is the most dominant geological feature of the world, detective. The separative tissue between the isolas. It's the interisolary mass. Wait, what's an isola? Isola is a Messinian word for a continent of matter enveloped on all sides by the pale. Also, isolation or land mass. We used to believe there was only one. In the last four centuries, we've discovered seven. Monday, Seol, Samara, Ilmara, Grad, Katla, and this, Insulinde. And Insulinde is an oceanic isola. It comprises, it's, it comprises mostly of water. Monday is the largest, Katla the coldest, Insulinde the bluest. What can I say? She stopped. Each is perishing and dear. Okay, what's the pale like? Achromatic, odorless, featureless. The pale is the enemy of matter and life. It is not like any other or any thing in the world. It is a transition state of being into nothingness. The negation of being. The negation of? That's right. The negation of being. She tightens uh, her hood around her neck. It's cold outside. So I'm not sure if I quite get it, but it sounds almost like... Almost like there are multiple worlds, and that's what they're calling the isolas. 
But there seems to be a way to move between them. Yeah, right. This question here, if we're surrounded by a pale, how do you get from Isola to Isola? But let's ask some of these other questions first. So is it here? No detective, we're safe. She points to sea. It begins there, 6,000 kilometers to the north, and even more to the south, east, and west. You are in the middle of the Isola. As your gavids instinctively turns north, a small back plaque pit opens up in your stomach. 6,000 kilometers from the end of the world? Yes, that is enough. Many cities are built much closer. And point north there. An uproar of matter, darling, rising into the pale, roaring, evaporating even, a great vision. The area of transition between the world and the pale is called porch collapse. Imagine a gray coronal mist, cold vapor, marked by spores of an opportunistic microorganism. A mold that's adapted to grow at the edge of the unrest. It's... She closes her eyes and breathes out heavily. The most disco thing you will ever see. What are its physical qualities? It's difficult to describe or even measure something whose fundamental property is a suspension of properties. Physical, epistemological, linguistic... The further into the pale you travel, the steeper the degree of suspension. Right down to the mathematical numbers stop working. No one has yet passed the number barrier. It may be impossible. Well, if we're surrounded by pale, how do you get from Isola to Isola? Oh, it is. Her lungs deflate. Her words like a sigh. So difficult for us. A squall of birds. Hardware operating the harbor. Firm. Self-evident. It is possible to force dimensions on the pale. In modern times, we can even compress its latitude, bouncing radio waves one into the other, shortening the path. But it's still hard for humans to navigate the pale without getting lost or having our minds damaged. So how can the pale damage the mind? Extensively, but how? Some say the damage stems from extreme sensory deprivation. Others that pale somehow consists of past information that's degrading, that it's rarefied past, not rarefied matter. They call it the blend over of the self. The pale does not only suspend the laws of physics, but also the laws of psychology, maybe history even. The human mind becomes overrated with my past. So it's really like, is this what's happening to me? Who says and who argues? Yeah. The logical positivists say, the dialect dialectical materialists argue. And what does this overradiation feel like? It feels terrible, absolutely terrible. International standards strictly limit civilian travelers to six days of pale exposure per year. It's more for her, may, way more. So you're not a civilian passenger, are you? No, nameless detective of the citizens' militia. I am a member of the entro, <laughs> entroponetic business class. I'm cleared and trained for 22 days of pale transit annually. Perhaps that explains her strange pining after the revolution some degraded early memories. This might also explain that very old lady who is like having memories and like, are they yours? Like, so what? There's someone's. I wonder if she's like traveled in the pale a lot and she has all those memories like from someone else. Someone else you've met may have been exposed as well. The strange, yeah, exactly. The strange gray haired woman in the lorry. Do lorry drivers pass the pale? Yes, carried in the hulls of airships, you know. It's, it's a horrific job. Automation will abolish it soon. You should ask the pale driver about this. She would see what she says. That poor woman must have stories to tell like you wouldn't imagine. Are you over radiated? Up to my gills, officer. What is entroponetic? Entroponetics, she corrects, is a scientific study of the pale, or a recent iteration of it by the way of Grod. The study of the pale reaches back 6,000 years. The Paracarnesians call it the Western Plain. They had not traveled the entire circumference of the Periscarnian super isola. It was not merely in the west, it was everywhere, even then surrounding them. Did they cross it, the western plain? There are signs of pr pretermodern crossings. Successful navigation of the pale relies not just on techn technical know-how, but of intensive psychological preparation. Some of these tactics have been known for thousands of years. What has entropenetics changed then? Nothing. We remain powerless before the pale. The only real advance in pale transit is the speed with which aerostatic craft can pierce it. Less exposure leads to less effects later. Aerostatic craft? Hybrid airships, detective. Conventional rotors or jet engines no longer add velocity after the point of reference for motion is suspended. Once you've crossed from near pale to far pale. 
In essence, we throw them in, they come out the other end, if we throw them precisely. And if we don't, then they don't. Gone, like a skipping stone beneath the surface. So how much pale is there compared to the world? The pale outweighs reality two to one. There is more pale than there is matter, and the ratio is slipping. Well, slipping how? To our detriment, or...? What do you think, detective? She looks you in the eye. I think it's growing. There's more and more of the pale. Precisely. One of the few measurable effects of the pale as it is expanding at an unknown rate. An intuitive conclusion of that development is that one day the pale will cover everything, but this sort of talk is most left to extreme extremists. Well, why is that extreme at all if it's going to happen? Most people, people, and indeed most private and government sector organizations, entire civilizations and religions even, find handy ways to ignore or downplay that knowledge. Yeah, this isn't a metaphor for anything, is it? I suggest you do the same. Off we go. You see the hangman's mouth open. Off we go into the wild pale yonder. One and all, she closed her eyes. They say pale is death, but for the universe. Why should we just leave and leave and the world get left behind? Yes, sweet reality, she stomps her foot. Before we do, tell me, detective. Is this the first time you heard this? Do you really not remember anything? Um, I'm getting a sense of who I am. Or it's sometimes, I sometimes get vague, sense vague shadows of the past and it's not good with that one. Then tell me, what do you think of the pale? Well, it's not going to be stopped by communists. It's not a pol uh, communist thing. It's liberal. It's not about politics. This thing, this thing totally um, basically is beyond politics. Uh, I, think it's, I think two and three, and one, two and three. It's terrifying. It's disco, and it will end all life. And who am I to think anything of it? But I think, I think it's disco. Hmm, her eyes tense. Crow crow's feet radiate from them. You, she observes you, your bloodshot eyes and swollen face. You really didn't know. This does not spell good for the investigation, detective. If you don't know even this, then... She stops mid-sentence. This investigation will be my masterpiece. The one they remember me by, I promise. I hope so. I truly do. If I may suggest, hold on to your colleague, Kitsuragi. I ran a check on him, and he's very competent. In the meanwhile, some of that assurance is meant for herself as much as it's meant for you. She must have a lot on the line here. You have me. I will assist you in any way I can, even if we have to do it one basic term at a time. She gives you a slight bow. That's all for now. Um, I want to go back for a second. I have quite a few skill points, so I'm going to spend one uh, in a spirit decor to level that up. And then I'm going to go back and retry the check with her. Um, go back. Good. What can I help you with? More questions about a reality. What is... Oh, hold it. No, I should, I should change my clothes to kind of up this as well. So hold on. Okay. Uh, the, the blazer will get it, but so will the jacket. It gives me some shivers. Um, does anything else give me spirit decor? That would, but I can't switch it for what I've got. Maybe something I have also gives me more, but uh, that's the only thing that was in the inventory. You're back. Good. All what right. What can I help you with? More questions about reality. Think of something close to you. Six kilometers southwest in the Valley of Dogs, junior officer Chad Tilbrook takes aim at a rabid black dog, licking its wounds in the grass. To his left, his partner Emil Mullins whispers, Do you hear what happened at Tequila Sunset in Martin Ace? Yes, he lost his mind, Tilbrook answers, fingering the trigger. Don't worry, Emil. He pulls on it slowly. Slowly now. He'll find it again. Is that us, Tequila Sunset? We always do. What am I? You? You are an officer of the RCM, she says energetically. The Revachal Citizens Militia. Preciso mundo. Good. And what is the Revachal Citizens Militia? Nothing more nor less than the de facto law enforcement body of post-revolutionary Revachal detective. You said de facto. 
Yes, that means not de jure. The RCM axiom was poetically called the twilight of international law, both at the behest of the coalition government and to its chagrin. What do you mean? The RCM's responsibilities are defined by the Emergency, Wayfair, and Ailments Act, three pieces of legislation keeping the city in a, let's be honest, laissez-faire status to the benefit of foreign capital. <laughs> so I'm basically a lackey of capital. I'm basically a thrall to foreign interests. I'm basically one of the good guys. I'm basically going to avoid this subject and ask the next question in this line of inquiry. Um, but I am. I'm a thrall to foreign ca interests. There's nothing basic about your role, Detective. It's true that the RCM keeps everything the way our seemingly permanent provisional rulers like it. She leans in. Yet on the other hand, I know these people. I deal with them daily. Let me tell you, dear, they are not fans of you. Well, why? The post-revolutionary decade was a disaster for the coalition government. Revachal in the 20s was hell, especially in the west side of the river. Gang warfare, a botched privatization scheme, a nuclear pile meltdown. Dang. They called it the International Zone because no nation wanted to claim responsibility. The RCM restored peace where the coalition failed. A true blue citizen's initiative, she smiles. They will never forgive you. So permit me to conclude with this. Who you are, to me, is the police. The only legitimate law enforcement authority in Revachal. Well, thank you, ma'am. And if those authorities drunk so, drink so hard, need to help recalling the basic terms of reality, well, I am here to help. Well, that is all for now. Okay, um, we're getting an autosave here. Uh, let's... I think I have time to quickly run and see if there's a, re a tape player in the, um, the pawn shop. All right. Scroll between the thighs of a page three girl. L'origine du disco. This is the pawn shop, right? Sure is. Um, check that out. Wow, a very large red t-shirt with an impressive print stands out from the other garb. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. The print depicts a muscle man straying towards you, a giant sword in each hand, encircled by burning embers. Behind him is a cluster of cabins engulfed in flames. Beneath them are the words, Heimdall burning. The antlers in the hood of the man's cloak and his piercing blue eyes are familiar. Sniff the t-shirt. Smells like worn cotton. A little old sweat there? Worn cotton with a side of flea market or trash bin. Sniffing's okay, says the shopkeeper, but please don't try anything on. Can't have you leaving your photon emissions in the fabric of things you're not going to buy. You're not imagining it. Photon emissions? What are you talking about? What's the deal with the man in this shirt? That's the man from Heimdall walking away as his village burns. He's surprised at your non-recognition. Uh, lie, sir, for no reason. Sure, I'll, fa I'll follow drama. I was a very sheltered child. My parents only let me read boring books about ordinary people, and the man from Heimdall looks extraordinary. That's very sad, man, that you missed out on some pretty well-executed, albeit repetitive, adventure literature. The man from Heimdall is the hero of a series of popular books based on a fictional version of Kat, uh, Katla, most what is nowadays Arda NFD. He left his native village of Heimdall after his son was kidnapped, having many exciting adventures and killing many enemies with his swords. But he lost his family in the process. Tragic stuff, really. How much are you selling the t-shirt for? Two real. That's very cheap for a printed t-shirt. It's still in pretty good shape. That is unusually cheap, isn't it? It should belong to anyone who's ready to wear it. Couldn't you give it to me for free then? He frowns, but why? Um, because I'm a broke cop that I sent to my name? I sympathize, I do. This is a for-profit enterprise. All right, I'm going to... It'll give me plus one physical instrument and plus one shivers. That's interesting. Minus two to authority. That's fine. I'll take it. Welcome to Heimdall, officer. That's pretty cool. Um, this thing, uh, we've looked at that before. We want to check out the um, boom box. All right, it's going to be 12 real for the boom box. So I can get one. Can I just play a tape on one of the boom boxes real quick? He's going to say no. Sorry, man, I can't be getting enough freebies. Never have, won't now. Can I get a discount on the boom box, a police discount? A discount? You have to keep the lights on, man. It's 12 real. Remember, he doesn't like music. He likes sounds. The Door Gunner Mega Mix is his type of tape. Certainly, he'd give you a discount if he knew you played something so experimental. 
Um, it's not doing any police work. I've got the door gunner mega mix here, an area defining work. Let me do four real. He purses his lips. For real is offensively low, but just this once. For the music concrete cop. Thanks for the discount, man. Here is the money for the boombox. And here you are. Quality sound reproduction on the go. It'll play anything, wherever. Turn any shape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. Awesome. Okay, so tomorrow when we first get up and meet Kim, we can listen to that tape the Hardy Boys gave us. Oh, wait. What's around back here? Um, another bottle. And maybe, oh yeah, oh now I'm just exploring crap, huh? Water lock out of order until Wednesday, 7.15 a.m. Okay. A uh, pair of fingerless gloves give me electrochemistry boost. I like in that. Okay, try this thing. A couple of indicator lights are missing from this control panel. Loose wires dangle from the now vacant holes. In the middle is a lever beneath it a small little, little metal plaque. This panel usually closes the water lock, turning it into a bridge that lets you cross the canal, but there's a crashed Samarin butter sign in the way. Pulling the lever probably won't do anything. The sign said it wouldn't, so I'm gonna let it be. Um, so I guess that means I can't go this way. Yeah, there's like a, there's nothing there. Let me just really quick, I, I know I should be done here. Time's running late. I just wanna take just a minute to go and drop off uh, my, the bottles I've collected and see how much money that gets me. Really, everyone's kind of gone to bed. I don't know if it's still open. Maybe it's locked. Uh, okay. Uh, got a thought. The yellow rose in the window. Those aren't the flowers that were left for Clage. Huh. I wonder if that's important. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, insert my bottles. Got 250. Not bad. That was enough to at least pay for my t-shirt. All right. And now I've learned about the pail. I'm going to go back to my room and it's time to sleep. But what I'm going to do is just kind of hang out and uh, sleep next episode. Because if this night is like the last night, then there's going to be, I mean, it's going to be pretty serious going down. So um, we want to, uh, we want to wait, you know, for the appropriate time for that sort of thing. Um, so we'll come on in here. Let me also, let's close my door. I think between episodes, I have two skill points. Uh, I might look through, I'm going to come over here at my, not my inventory, but my, uh, tasks and especially on the map, which I've never gotten a copy of the city map, which, uh, but, um, see which ones of these things I want to kind of put more points into maybe and if there's any of these other thoughts I want to add to my thought cabinet uh so I'll, I'll, I'll ponder that between episodes and we'll start out spending some more of these points um but uh and also we'll have an opportunity to see what happens what kind of dreams my subconscious spits up tonight but that is all we have for today so thank you so much for watching I'll see you soon